my granddad developed uh, non-Hodgkin's lymph cancer at uh, roughly 80 uh, years of age. He was basically killed by the medical staff in the care home. We were making her die because it suited us. And But you had no idea? No. We had a few times when people tried to put us under pressure to have her uh, euthanized. But she, she's just a child like every other child in our family. She was the one going to die, but we were her sons, we loved her, and we wanted the best for her. Was there a consensus? There was not a consensus. I was robbed of something like three years of life uh, and contact with my grandfather. To help people to die, controlling their suffering and controlling their symptoms. We don't help them to die by killing them. What is our society becoming? It's a quality society. Only the best will survive. We are in a spiritual war, and not to say that would be a delusion. We are in a situation of war. There is no physical war going on, but on another level, truth is under attack, dignity is under attack. Now, if there is a, a war raging and, and we are part of it, we have to prove who we are in that war. And, and the same kind of courage of us is required, maybe even more, because there is not such a visible enemy. Whether you are a Greek in ancient times, as in the times of the Hippocratic Oath, operating purely from the point of view of reason, or whether you are a Christian believer or a believer of, of the Jewish or other, operating from the, from the point of view of faith, it is very clear that life is a precious gift from the first moment of existence until natural death. It is not ours to control. We are entrusted with it. We don't control it. The individual experience of life has become the measure for everything. So if my individual experience is that I don't feel well, that I fear that I might suffer, that becomes the guidance, the measure for what I do. And then it doesn't take very long to come to euthanasia. The whole point comes down to why do people ask for death? And, and the other side wants you to think it's because they're nearing death and they're suffering incredible pain. And in fact, that represents almost no cases. There's so few cases of people who are asking for euthanasia because of uncontrolled suffering physically. It has to do usually with A, fear of suffering, and B, I am very emotionally distraught by my situation. It's no longer physical, it's psychological. It's, it goes on and on, and one wonders, one realizes, oh my, we're not looking forward towards a looming slippery slope out there, we're halfway down it. I was diagnosed with MS when I was 30. At the two to three year point, my grief was so deep, my heartache was so sharp, that my thinking became clouded. And if there had been a, a Jack Kevorkian back in the mid-1980s, I can see that I might have opted for that option. I'm so glad today that it did not happen, because I never would have known my grandchildren. You see, the difficulty with making that decision is we're not really sure what tomorrow is going to bring. We make a decision based on the grief of today. I would have, yes, if I hadn't been surrounded by the support and the love of my wife and my children, and my, my faith community, and my God. 
I can see that I would have opted for assisted suicide.